I just, it's beautiful. It's pretty. Look at this clock. I actually don't have anything else to say about it. I don't care about anything else here. It looks good. It's a clock. What else does it need to do other than tell time? It's telling the time. And it's pretty. All right. Hello, everybody. You uh, might have thought you could escape these uh, red curtains, but I assure you, you cannot. They will in some way, shape, or form, probably be with me forever. I'm here to talk about Ubuntu DDE Remix. Now, I installed the Ubuntu DDE Remix for the first time yesterday, or the day before. I, it's all a blur for me. Right away, I was struck by two things. First and foremost was, I could actually use it, and it didn't crash for me in the way that Deepin did. And two... It's also kind of like exactly what I've been wanting from something uh, using the Deep in Desktop. And that is, that is a an up-to-date base, you know, I'll be able to use 2010, you know, and which I am currently. Let's see, control center here, about. So, system info, this is the Ubuntu uh, DDE remix for Groovy Gorilla 2010. I can move to 2104 when it comes out and ubuntu dde has their release for that and that means i'm not stuck on like this really really uh sort of stale old base granted i typically don't mind things that are more lts-y but in regards to a project like this that's moving kind of quickly and uh in terms of development you know it's fairly new so i want the new stuff as soon as possible and I think uh, being able to move along with that, whereas with Deepin on Debian, not only am I restricted because a lot of the packages there are out of date in general, um, as somebody who has a tendency to constantly try and grab the newest hardware, I'm going to run into problems there. So this solves a lot of issues for me just right out of the box. Now, the other thing that I really love about it is I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, while I do have some issues with my weird display configuration, what you're seeing right now is manually set to 1920 by 1080, but my native resolution is 3840 by 1080, um, which by default forces scaling to 1.25 in Deepin. Thankfully, though, I can actually adjust this in Ubuntu DDE, where in Deepin on any other distribution, as soon as I open the display settings, it immediately crashes that menu. So I'm really, really excited to see that. Uh, things that I think are incredibly noteworthy, first and foremost, is that it is Deepin. And that means you have access to probably some of the most incredible apps of any desktop environment. And I'm not overselling that. Okay, the Deepin file manager, let, let's just open it up and I can show you what I mean. One of the things that I absolutely love about this is the way that this directory system here is presented. So by default, it's set to something called computer, which is very similar to what you have in Windows with like the, I think it's like the My Places or My PC, something like that. You can actually view your disks here, your system disks, uh, underneath your, your primary directories for your user, which is, I think is awesome. And then, of course, over on the side, you've got your shortcuts to everything, your disks laid out there, and then your bookmarks, your, your LAN network, stuff like that. I think that's really, really cool. But what I also think is really, really cool, um, a double click is default. You could set it to single click. Doesn't matter to me, honestly. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Um, but you can control it to change where your your file manager will open from initially so that way if this isn't something you like obviously you can change it but this is actually the kind of thing that i really really love about windows explorer this kind of view and it's actually something that i've always wanted in a linux file manager another thing that i think is really great about this i'm going to go ahead and hop into my downloads here because i actually have some Google Takeouts. And the reason this is important is that this is a series of archives that are similar in structure to each other, but they are split up because of file size limitations. Now, I set all of my archives, my downloads from Google Takeout, 
to be limited to 4 gigabytes. So these are all similar in structure to each other, and that means that it is somewhat difficult in a way to merge all of them together. Because if I actually go ahead and open one of these up, you'll see that the first directory is takeout. And then after that is Google Photos and Archive Browser. And then after that is a bunch more folders and everything inside of there. And they're all dated. And they're all, you know, like album names will be the same for everything. They're all dated. So if I have directories in the other archive that are similar, right? Take out Google Photos, a bunch of these, and everything is dated. Um, to merge them all together, typically what people do is they would right click and they would extract it. And then once it extracts, they'd go ahead and get to the next one. They'd right click and extract it. And the problem with that is you then have to manually move all of these folders together because I extracted that. And now I'm left with a folder here that says take out whatever. And if I do that to the next one, I'll be left with a folder that says take out whatever. And if I do that to the next one, the same thing will happen. But what if you didn't have to do that at all? Because that is really stupid and you shouldn't have to do that anyway. That's right. You don't have to do that because the folks who made the Deepin utilities are like insanely smart. And what you can actually do is select all four of them, extract here, and it will go through each of these zips and it will merge all of them together into one cohesive similar structure since they are all formed in the same way. The great thing about this is extraction successful. You might notice that I only have one folder here and it's takeout. I don't have all the weird takeout 2020 dated folders there. No, just the one that says takeout. And if I open it, Google Photos. I've got my archive browser right there. If I open the Google Photos folder, I am left with all of the folders dated. All of the albums exactly where they need to be. Everything merged accordingly. So beyond the really cool file manager and extractor, what else does it have to offer? Well, what I thought was really interesting was the device info. Uh, where is it here? The device manager application. And what I think is really cool about this device manager application is that it shows you like all of your system info in a really well laid out thing. So one of the complaints that I, I kind of have about, let's say, GNOME is that if I go into this, uh, you know, the info about the system, it's all fairly basic. And I'm not really aware of a utility quite like this that will actually present you with all of this kind of information in such a pretty way. So in Windows, you actually have utilities. Uh, it's the device manager, uh, I think same name that will show you information about all your devices, the drivers associated with them. But it's a, it's almost like they took a window that they had for all of this information that they developed in like Windows 2000 and brought it directly over to Windows 10. The fact that it's so detailed about every single part of this shows that they've actually put work into exposing these things for the user in a way that actually matters and isn't garbage to use. It blows my mind. It's really, really nice. I know some people aren't as excited about this as I am. That's fine. You do you, buddy. But I'm excited because I think this is really, really, really cool. And their screenshot utility. I'm about to blow your mind. I'm going to click on the screen chap, uh, the screen capture. Wow. I'm going to select an area. That was super stupid easy, but I have annotation tools built right into it. But I also have, as you can see here, recording options. It has a built in screen recorder in the screenshotting utility which also gives you the options to show your keystrokes. Like when you are doing like a little tutorial or showing somebody what you're doing, you can enable the webcam in the recording. You can also enable the click indicators. So if you're making a recording and you want people to see when you're clicking, it does that as well. Built in to the default screenshot and screen capture utility. This is huge because it's still really simple 
All I had to do was click a button, select an area, boom, done. I can still just hit print screen, boom, done. But I also have the ability to record the screen, and I can control what format it's in. I can control if it's just a GIF, or if I want it as a video, I've got MP4 and MKV. The basic gist of it is, holy cow, this is the best screenshotting utility I've ever seen in my life. And I love it. Because it's not overly complex, yet it's still insanely powerful. It has literally, like, exactly the right tools, and not all of the other random crap that no one needs. And I am so impressed by this. I love this. I'm actually genuinely excited for Deepin. Because it's just cool, bro. It's just cool. I'm gonna open up the control center, right? Go to personalization. Yes, you have your accent color selections. You have auto light dark mode. You have dark mode. You get to control the opacity and transparency of different elements of the system, which I think is also really cool. You can go fully, like, almost fully transparent and have blurring. You can have good old, uh, mostly there, all the way there. Whatever it is, you have the freedom to do that. And I think having blur is really, really cool. Obviously, you can change your icon themes, your cursor themes, your fonts. Um, and I think that the way that they've laid this out, separating uh, categories and then having, like, basic subcategories and not overloading the user with incredibly complicated and unnecessary things, but still giving them a pretty decent amount of control and customizing their system is a really nice balance. Um, but something that I think it holds over, say, something like GNOME, which, by the way, I love GNOME. I'm not knocking GNOME. It's actually one of my favorite desktops of all time. But if I want to change fonts in GNOME, I, I can't. I have to install a third-party utility. I have to go into the repository install gnome tweaks and then i can adjust my fonts here <clears throat> boom size of fonts which font style or which standard font what font do i want any font who cares i do let me tell you something about ubuntu dde here that i was incredibly satisfied to find when i installed it now, typically, I have issues with my microphone. Now, granted, my audio is not perfect right now. I'm going to click on the sound settings here. I'm going to click on the input button. What I normally do is manually go into my pulse audio configuration file. Don't know why I said it that way. And I enable automatic noise suppression. Except what's really cool is that I have it right here in the settings menu. I'm not dealing with all that other crap. It's just working. And that's what matters. I just, it's beautiful. It's pretty. Look at this clock. I actually don't have anything else to say about it. I don't care about anything else here. It looks good. It's a clock. What else does it need to do other than tell time? It's telling the time. And it's pretty. Deepin is the realization of the middle ground between a desktop like KDE, which is insanely powerful, but also incredibly complex and a little exhausting to me. And GNOME, which is incredibly simple, sometimes to a fault, um, but not quite very flexible or powerful in some regards. They both have really, really strong points, and they also have weaknesses. And the very interesting thing about GNOME and KDE is that their strengths and weaknesses are almost opposites for each other. A lot of where KDE's strength comes in is exactly where GNOME's weaknesses come in, and vice versa. Deepin is like the Venn diagram, you know, right in the middle where you have the two. That's Deepin. That's what they've done. And to see that on an Ubuntu base excites the crap out of me because this is so good. I actually really love this. I'm genuinely excited for this in a way that I don't think I've been for a distribution in years. I, I'm running it and I have zero doubts about it at all. You should keep an eye on this because it is really, really exciting. I really want to see this go places. Their utilities are fantastic. I just... I don't even know how to explain how thrilled I am by this kind of thing, because it's everything I've wanted. 
the deep and desktop has always been incredibly beautiful to me, but the only reason I haven't used Deepin as my daily driver is because of the underlying base, because there's package mismatches, because it's based on Debian, but they also maintain like half of the packages, but only kind of recent on some regards, uh, because hardware support isn't quite there. Now, granted, they do great work with hardware, but very new hardware, because they're on Debian, is kind of screwed. Um, all of these little things that stop me from using Deepin proper, which, by the way, is an amazing distribution in my opinion, but it's just not usable for me because I can't access those things. This solves all of them. I get probably one of the most uh, beautiful and decently flexible desktop environments on, in my, in my opinion, the best Linux operating system base of all time. It is the perfect blend for me, and this is why I'm so excited for it, because I think this is going to be something that a lot of people are going to find is really, really good for them. And granted, it's still a remix. It's not final yet. A lot can change. A lot of things need to be improved, but you should keep your eye on it. I recommend giving it a try, because this one is really going to be worth it. personalizable. That's a word. Sure, look it up. It's fine.